They say imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. But what happens when that line is blurred? What is the difference between homage and plagiarism? When the creation of something is inspired by an influence versus it being a carbon copy? Now, we have seen this before multiple times on my channel. Miracle Star to Gumball, Caroline to Coraline, and of course, the war crime that is Finding Jesus. These are all ripoffs through and through. There's nothing genuinely transformative being created here. It is just shameless, derivative garbage. But that brings us to the topic of this video, The Legend of Lucky Pie, a Chinese animated web series that bears a striking resemblance to one of the most popular cartoons of all time, Fiona and Cake. <laughs> uh, Adventure Time. Adventure Time is undeniably one of the most influential cartoons in history and it has paved the way for multiple shows in its wake. In the 2000s, most cartoons were slice-of-life oriented, but nowadays, we see character-driven stories with an overarching narrative thread. This includes Steven Universe, The Owl House, and Amphibia, to name a few. Now, when I first watched Adventure Time, I thought it was too simple in design and quirky in its writing. Like, uh, <laughs> truth be told, it downright annoyed me. Just Finn and Jake saying random words alongside nonsensical plots. Yo, Jake, it's mathematical, man. Uh, a bum dump. <laughs> uh, it's Marceline, and she's uh, totally gooned down with the butt dump. <laughs> uh, but yeah, overall, I found it all uh, a bit pretentious. But man, would I eat those words. I came around on the series in the mid-2010s and realized how deep, sincere, and compelling Adventure Time could be. Mature themes featuring well-fleshed-out characters who had arcs that ranged from depression, toxic relationships, the passage of time, the mantle of responsibility to, like, an authoritarian degree, and even death itself. Uh, quite the change of pace compared to what I initially thought was Adventure Time. Though, the show never lost sight of what made it fun and endearing, which is its characters and sense of humor. Hell, Adventure Time would even come back to the table and continue its stories with many movies and a Fiona and Cake series, which is even more of an extension continuation of the original show itself. Except Fiona and Cake would even be more existential with its themes and narrative. But hey, you know, also butts to be fair. There are butts. I guess butts have always been an essential part of the Adventure Time expanded universe. Oh yeah, uh, this video is not about Adventure Time, it is about its imitator, Lucky Pie. And yes, I am far from the first person to talk about this show, but I'm kind of glad that I waited because Lucky Pie needed more time to bake. Now, many people jumped down the throat of Lucky Pie when it made its debut on YouTube eight years ago, and understandably so. It is uncanny how much it looks like Adventure Time and also unapologetically channels its energy. You got your off-brand Finn, your off-brand Jake, your off-brand Adventure Time intro, and even thumbnails that sported the same visual style of the title cards for Adventure Time episodes. With Fiona and Cake's recent airing, I decided now was a good time to finally sink my teeth into Lucky Pie. No, that is not a pun. Okay, yes it is. And watch the completed web series. It has been over five years since its conclusion. Which is interesting to even say out loud. Conclusion? Wait, this wasn't just a one-off thing? Hold on. It had its own story? With a payoff that featured a war between magical cats and dogs? With competent animation and a sexy nurse girl in thigh highs on a badass reindeer motorbike? Can't wait to see that one get clipped to Twitter. Listen, if you can't like nurses and thigh highs on a badass reindeer motorbike, I don't want to be alive. Well, don't keep me waiting any longer. I got to know more about this show. Oh, sh**. It's the sponsor of the video. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll make this quick. So I want to give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Helix Sleep. I recently got a new mattress from Helix, and I say this with 100% sincerity and honesty. It is the most comfortable mattress I've ever had in my life. And I've been having the most restful sleep ever, too. Also, the pillows are, like, really comfy. Like, I was surprised by their quality since they're just thrown in for free. Like, legit cozy. So, for those who don't know, Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. Everybody's different, and Helix knows that. 
So they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. For me, I sleep on my side, and I like a mattress that is both plush yet firm. The results? Perfection. With a recommended Midnight Lux and King Size. I got the mattress. It was mailed to my house. I hauled it up the stairs. I got an army ant. And then poof, there it is. That's the mattress. Again, Helix delivers your mattress right to your door. With free shipping in the US, plus these mattresses are fiberglass free, unlike other mattress brands out there. Also, Helix recently launched their newest and most high-end collection yet, the Helix Elite Mattress. They put their years of extensive mattress expertise to use to create a truly elevated sleep experience. The Helix Elite Collection includes six different mattress models to combine high-end luxury with personalized comfort tailored to your preferences. And guess what? If you are hesitant about getting a Helix mattress, there is a 100-night sleep trial to test the mattress out and ensure that you love it. There's also a 10-year warranty, and Helix offers financing options and flexible payment plans too. So I highly recommend Helix Sleep. They've been a long-standing sponsor for the channel and provide quality mattresses. I say that with 100% certainty. Visit helixsleep.com slash saberspark to get 20% off your Helix mattress, plus two pillows for free. Also, keep an eye out on the Helix website this month. They have some secret flash sales popping up throughout October. So it's a great time to upgrade your sleep. Go hit them up today. And on that note, back to the video. And more importantly, back to the sexy nurse. Damn. Going into Lucky Pie, I admittedly had my bias at the ready, and it wasn't looking good. Off the bat, I could see the similarities. The simple designs of the characters, the colors, the setting, the character dynamics. Just a lot in common. And after witnessing a dump load of ripoffs on this channel, you can't blame me for having my preconceived notions. The show follows the characters of Apai and Lucky, our Finn and Jake stand-ins. Both have similar chemistry to Finn and Jake, being carefree, friendly, silly, and eager for adventure in their fantasy world. Lucky the horse bears a close resemblance to Jake the dog, with his chibi proportions and ability to transform. Though for Lucky, he kind of has like this A mode, B mode for transformation. Jake can turn into almost anything with his stretchy powers. But for Lucky, he can be a chibi horse or uh, some kind of like normal horse for galloping and like running. Also, Lucky reminds me a lot of Pokey's design from Gumby. For Finn and his doppelganger, Apai, they are both young boys with noodly arms and a fondness for swords and adventuring. As far as differences go, Apai is not a human and is actually an owl. Yeah, they reveal this later on in the series, and it kind of explains the weird proportions for Apai with his face. Though, I never thought much of it. I just saw him as a, a fictional humanoid creature. But surprise, surprise, he's an owl person. There are a total of five episodes of Lucky Pie, with each one showing constant improvement in writing, animation, and raising the narrative stakes along the way. There was even an episode that was over 20 minutes long with the majority of the other episodes being around like 10 minutes each. Episode 1 is simple, and features Lucky and Apai fighting a lamprey monster on the beach and protecting their mermaid-esque friend. Episode 2 has the duo going through a maze, along with some other side characters, and like fighting this goblin king monster and his minions. Episode 3, which has an English dub by the way, has Lucky and Apai trying to help their fly friend find dragon poop? <laughs> Though to be fair, Adventure Time is full of nonsensical moments, so this tracks as far as similarities between the two go. I've already been flying for two days straight now. Oh please, Hypernite. I'm clean. I took a shower this morning. Well, I still think you'd better disinfect your body before you come close. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it got dirty. Episode 4 is quite the change of pace, with its exposition and goes full on world building mode. There's a war between cats and dogs. There's a space human who is from China to check on Earth after humans left it a long time ago. There's owl people. And then we discover that Apai himself is one of these owl people. It is a, a lot compared to what has been the status quo thus far. Either you die. Or you recover. 
Those are the only two ways you're leaving here. And then there's the finale with episode five, where we even get a new intro with what appears to be off-brand Princess Bubblegum singing a song that sounds a lot like Rebecca Sugar's own music. I know I'm not alone, I know you won't Will happen again and again Cause you and I will always be back then The episode is not as high stakes as the previous, but features some new characters like this apple swordsman with acrylic nails and this squid monster tree thing. And, um... That's it! The most climactic moment of the episode is Arpai using his wings. But we don't see a continuation of the spaceman or the dog and cat war from the previous episode. Which is like a bit confusing, but I guess I can say the same for the entire web series in general. Afterwards, no one dares go to the gold volcano anymore. Yeah! <laughs> But after watching this potential plagiaristic web series, I had a full-on realization. Lucky Pie is not a ripoff. Yes, it is heavily inspired by Adventure Time in many, many ways. But I would call Lucky Pie more of a homage than a ripoff than anything. Ripoffs usually have ulterior motives. To ride the coattails of originals in the hopes of stealing its audience for popularity or financial gain. But that is not the case for Lucky Pie. What we have here is a small web series created by fans of Adventure Time, simply because they love Adventure Time. Wow, uh, something sincere for once on this channel? <laughs> I'll be damned. To friendship. <laughs> so the world's cleanest pink poop turned out to be dirty. <laughs> Lucky Pie is apparently the creation of Chinese artist who banded together and willed their creation onto the web. There was not a studio. There was not financial backing from some big company. Instead, it was just a small group of artists who had Patreon to back it up at best. On their YouTube About page, we love animation, especially the American style. We hope that we can make some story fun, humorous, and full of Eastern philosophy." End quote. So it really goes to show how truly inspirational Adventure Time has become and the landscape of Western animation and its global reach. And that's a good thing. Lucky Pie went above and beyond most typical creations who borrow heavily from original IPs. Wow Now Entertainment has built a company on its shallow imitations of Disney and Pixar films for the sole reason of only making money. There is no artistic integrity whatsoever. For Lucky Pie, though, there's obvious effort and heart in its creation, and it's clear that the web series itself is fueled by passion more than anything. Passion that was even able to improve the quality of the series as it progressed, with more advanced animation that is genuinely impressive, plus the added bonus of dubbing the series in English. Again, that is effort. Now compare this to Miracle Star which was like a far cry from the quality or sincerity of the amazing world of Gumball. Miracle Star was not a homage built on admiration for Gumball. Instead, it was built on goat milk sales, because that's a thing. Buggy Pie even tried to elevate their own content with their own narrative with the cat and dog war, Lucky's village burning down, Oppie's mysterious past, and the space human questioning the current state of Earth. Now, the show is not perfect, all right? Let's get that right out of the gate. The tonal whiplash is palpable, especially in episode four. And it leaves me confused with a lot of the questions that never really get answered and never will be answered since the series is completed. The finale was anticlimactic to me. And that is due to the stakes being raised in episode four, only to not really be addressed in episode five. In hindsight, uh, raising the stakes that much might have done more harm than good with the narrative flow of the series. It's hard to be story-driven in your five-part web series that has three slice-of-life episodes. However, there's effort and quality here, so it's forgivable. Just know that this isn't a shameless ripoff in its entirety, which to me is already a huge win. And apparently, uh, people who have worked on Adventure Time have even heard about Lucky Pie and view the web series in a favorable light, that it's the product of very ambitious fans, and that it's a testament to how inspirational Adventure Time has become when it comes to the animation landscape, both large and small. So overall, 
The Adventures of Lucky Pie is a great example of transformative fan content. It demonstrates the difference between passion-driven fan projects versus derivative garbage ripoffs. For the team behind Lucky Pie, they are currently trying to launch their own animated series called Cosmic Travelers, which looks pretty damn cool, though albeit slightly underbaked. However, said video on their channel seems to be more of a proof of concept. So hopefully, these artists can get a chance to shine with their own original work. I guess when it comes to Adventure Time fan creations, they somehow have the ability to be more than just a clone, whether it be the team behind Lucky Pie, or hey, I guess Ice King when it comes to Fiona and Cake. Long live the fanfic. I know you're out there somewhere. I just haven't figured out how to get to you. But believe me, I will. I will.